Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to get an effect like this. And you don't need a drone or Google Earth, you just need Photoshop, After Effects, and a little creativity. So about two years ago, I showed you how to use a drone and Google Earth to get this crazy zooming out from space effect. And a lot of you were really excited to point out that you didn't have a drone, but you do have a phone. And I know that because apparently 45% of you are watching this video on it right now, and a higher percentage of that than I'm comfortable with are watching this on the toilet. So please wash your hands and then take that lovely piece of technology and then get either a friend or a tripod or a balcony to get a shot from a top-down perspective. You could even get creative by setting up a ladder and just taping your phone to the top of it to get a shot like this. This. But you might still notice that we can actually see the legs of the ladder in this shot, but that's okay because all you need is this usable area right here. Next up, you wanna take that piece of footage, bring it into After Effects, and then cut it down to only the section you wanna use, like if you're giving a line of dialogue. If your shot was locked off, then great, but if it was handheld or if there's any subtle movement, like even if you were filming with a drone, you're gonna to wanna to add warp stabilizer here and set it to no motion just to make sure everything is truly still. And then make sure your subject is positioned where you want them. Once that's done, export a single frame of your video. I like using PNG sequence because it allows for transparency. And then open up Photoshop and then drop in that frame that you just exported. Now here's where the magic happens. Make a selection around your subject in the area that we specified before, and then right click and invert your selection and use generative fill to add whatever you'd like to the scene. So for me specifically, I want a top down aerial view of a grassy field surrounded by mountains. Once you get something that you like, hide the bottom original layer so that you only have the generative fill and export it as a PNG with transparency checked. Then when you bring it back into After Effects, you can just throw it on top and you've got this blending the two perfectly together. Awesome, right? But here's the magical next step. And this is also one of the main reasons why we're doing this in After Effects instead of Premiere Pro. If we did this in Premiere by nesting and then moving it around as a single unit, the image would look super pixelated when we zoomed back in, or if we tried to zoom out, we would just get a black empty frame. So instead in After Effects, right click and create a null layer and highlight your original footage as well as the generative fill layer and click here to parent them to the null layer. Now when we scale up or down on our null layer, we're actually controlling the entire scene as a unit and it retains all of the detail and doesn't get pixelated. So now we can zoom out to a certain amount, export a new frame and then bring this new frame into Photoshop and continue expanding our scene. Export just the generative fill layer like before as a transparent PNG, and without moving the playhead in After Effects, stick this new image right over top of everything else and parent it as well to the null layer. Now we've expanded our scene even more and you can rinse and repeat this process until you get something crazy. But you might notice that there's actually a problem with the way that the zoom happens. If you just keyframe it to start zoomed all the way in and then zoom all the way out, you'll notice that it moves super fast into the final position. But there is a way to fix this. Highlight both your first and last keyframe, right click and select keyframe assistant, exponential scale. And now you can see that it moves fluidly just like you'd expect. And if you need to make the movement faster or slower as a whole, highlight all of your keyframes and hold Alt or Option while clicking and dragging to move them all in proportion. Now we can really sell this effect by adding some motion blur just by highlighting all of our layers and clicking the motion blur icon here, as well as this one for the entire composition. Now with our motion blur added, we can add even more stuff to spice up our shot like clouds, birds, and sheep, or any other motion graphics or stock footage that you wanna composite into your scene. Find a spot where it feels like it fits well, and then just make sure to parent it to the null layer, as well as selecting for motion blur. Now a cool little trick here is that if you just export a frame of only the thing that you wanna composite into your scene in the position that you actually want it to end up in, and then bring that into the Photoshop file of the very widest scene that you generated. Then you can select the edges of frame here and use generative fill to help blend the edges. Then make sure the only thing selected are these newly generated layers. Export as a PNG, and when you bring them into After Effects, it's like it does all of the compositing for you. Now all that's left to do is add some sound effects for the motion and for the environment. And we've officially created a shot that looks like this. And I've made sure to link to all of the assets that I used in this video down in the description below. And it's actually a really great time because right now Motionary is having their holiday sale where you can get 15% off an annual subscription. And you can check that out in the description below too, right after you check out this video on how to use the new Rotobrush tool inside of After Effects. I'll see you over there.